to go see Mark McEwen at one of his amazing restaurants, Fabrica, which happens to be one of my favorites. But we're gonna talk a lot about entrepreneurship, his business, and more importantly, a lot of the questions and inquiries that you have formulated and sent us, we're gonna try and cover as much as possible. So stick around, lots to do. Well, everybody, this is a regular of ours, of course, Mark McEwen. We are here, though, at his restaurant, Fabrica, where I happen to spend a lot of time. This is one of my favorite places to eat. And of course, I'll let you know what I eat, uh, and we're gonna get a chance to see where it's cooked. But first and foremost, we're gonna talk to Mark more about his business ventures. So Mark, so glad you're here. And of course, I guess good. I'm here. Good to have you outside the office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're a busy guy, very successful man, true entrepreneur, that's why we love having you on the show, because when you were last on, ugh, the amount of phone calls and questions that we received from people that are thinking about maybe getting into the restaurant business, or even just entrepreneurial questions, uh, but that's kind of where we're gonna go with this. So first, let's talk about Shops at Don Mills, Fabrica, and the fact that you decided to open up here. What made you think of doing so? Well, my idea for a food store, granted it was my first endeavor to do so, uh, I wanted it to have some scale, I wanted to have parking, proximity to the neighborhood. And when you look around the city, real estate is highly valuable. Uh, the big firms have all the big stores. So it, it drove me to look a little bit further out. Now, east of Bayview was a, was a strange new territory back in the right. day. So the Don Mills Center was uh, sort of viewed in a, in, a, in a funny way that it was uh, a lot of retirees that hung out at the Don Mills Center and that's all I ever heard from people. And we call them the Brady Brunch houses. The, the, yeah, exactly. Right, but, the side splits. But what's happened, it, it took a few more years than I thought, but, but the area has become gentrified. And now I believe Don Mills is the new Lawrence Park when it comes to real estate. So all these young, affluent, professional couples are buying up all these houses, condominiums are going up. It took three years longer than what I had anticipated but I actually have the neighborhood that I, I believe you envisioned. I would have. Exactly. But this is the thing, you, you had foresight, you knew that this was going to happen. Well, you know, people say I'm really bright at this point in time, but people were saying I was really- You're crazy, right? I was really crazy. Which means that you're actually more right. Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have to be able to weather that storm of, right. of craziness. Right, yeah, because yeah, a lot of times I always say, when people say that you're nuts, that's actually when you really should go for it because nobody else really well, you, believes in it. But in you life, do. you sort of want to buy when no one's buying. That's right. Now, I know that restaurant business is very similar, we say, to the retail industry, um, but there's a lot of people that still want to get into it because they have a passion for food. So can you give any advice for people that are saying, okay, you know what, this is something that I want to do. Is it a part-time endeavor or is this, this is full, full boat? Like we All say right. that in the real estate world, it's hard to be a part-time realtor. It's, it's pretty prolific at the, the rate that restaurants open. Yeah. And, uh, and as much so as many as close. So, so there's that kind of turnover. It's a very challenging right. industry. Uh, you have to know it from the bottom up. You know, to come into it and be an investor because you, you like the vibe of a restaurant or you want it to be your private restaurant, typically 99% of the time it's a disaster. If you're a chef, if you're a front of the house person, you have wine knowledge, you have production knowledge, you need to have those skills. You can't just go to the street and hire. Right. Those people don't really exist. And uh, if you can't manage your own shop, Really, your, your ability to have success is going to be limited, limited to zero. Uh, but it can be a wonderful game. You sort of inject yourself into people's lives in thoughtful, meaningful ways that fit and aren't difficult for them to understand. And when people are thinking, I mean, I'm a great chef, I love it, there's still a very important business side to it. And real estate plays a key component to that as well. Well, I, I did the commencement address at George Brown yesterday, and I, I talked to these young food professionals and service professionals, you better know your business. Right. You better be able to read a P&L and drive your numbers and understand your numbers because if they're wrong, you have to fix them. Otherwise, you won't have an establishment to run. That's right. Most valuable skill you have as a, as a, as a private business owner is to know front door to back door. Talk about right. the importance of mentors. I mean, I know that there'll be many people that you'll credit that have been influential in what you've learned. Uh, we always talk about the fact that we learn from our mistakes. Uh, oh, yeah. We like to try and pass on as much information so we can minimize other people's mistakes. But how important is it to mentor or to learn from people that have truly made it work? Find a mentor. Find a few mentors that you admire and work with and spend the next three years absorbing like a sponge. Learn the front door, learn the back door, get a sense of scale, get a sense of space. It's not just about a specific recipe and a pretty plate, a little bit of style here and an Instagram there. It's about understanding how it all works. 
and it takes a while and then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I, I actually know how that operation works. Right. Most, most of the strongest characteristics you need in business are really simple. You need to be kind to people, you need to be motivational with people, you need to be thoughtful in terms of how you message, you need to be consistent in how you message, and you need to be exact. And there's no science to that. It's, it's pretty obvious Yeah, science. but I love so, how you put it. Yeah. And you always smile because honestly, you love what you do and that's key. You have to do something you love. I have a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's really case. important. All right, everybody, I've got the car load up with groceries. I've got flowers in the back. And more importantly, I've got the chef here and we're now gonna go and cook up some trouble. Let's you do ready it. to go, Mark? Here we go. Let's go. So if you're gonna go into your backyard and build a deck, uh, that's great. You, and a lot of guys can build, they have the skill to do it. But, oh my gosh.